What up guys, welcome back to Kush Coast. Today we're gonna to show you guys how to turn all, any old bedroom into a grow room. Uh, we're gonna do this one with two 315 Sun System LECs. They're light emitting ceramics. Uh, they're extremely cost effective and efficient, so they're great lights to use. Um, we're gonna do it on a four byte flood to drain table, just like the normal systems we use in most of the videos you guys see. Uh, we're hooking a homeboy up today, so we're going to show them how it's all done. We want our tray to run long ways like this. Uh, that way you can walk around it if you can see the room shorter this way than it is this way. So we'll run it long ways, get plenty of room around it. Uh, for the LECs, the first thing you guys are going to need to do is cut a couple of 14 inch boards. Uh, come two inches off each side. Put your eye bolts right on the center line if you can at 10 inches apart the reason why you need that 10 inches for your light lifters here they're 10 inches apart so basically you just take any old one inch round ring with a lag on it pre-drill your holes use a tool like this or something i like to use the socket extension it fits right in the holes here and you can turn it real nice to tighten them down but once you guys get that done you guys are going to need to hang them and they're going to need to be centered to the tray and we'll go ahead and show you guys how that looks when we get it done. All right, so before I hang these things, I wanted to show you guys a trick real quick just to get your symmetry of the room right. So if you lay, this is the sheet of plywood we're going to use or a particle board. Uh, it's got the rough side up right now and the smooth side that's coated down. And I'll show you guys why in a little bit why that's sitting like that. But for now, you just basically want to lay your lights out on it. And you want to measure to make sure that you got even distance so the light projection will spread in a nice square over each section four by four feet covering four by feet on that side and four by feet on that side for the full four by eight then once you got that laid out and your sheet of plywood evenly spaced around the room where you want it we've got 12 inches there 26 inches there 26 inches there and a little bit more over here just to make sure this door Got plenty of room around the tray. Now you're gonna go straight from there, straight up, and that's where you want your lights to hang. So if the studs do not line up in the room to where it's at, you're gonna need to run one board across and then put your plate boards on the side of it. So we'll show you how that looks if, that, if the studs don't line up to your benefit. But you don't want much more than 20 inches of gap in between these lights for projection. That's going to give you the best projection you can get out of it. So let's go ahead and get those mounted up to the ceiling. We'll show you what they look like. Okay, so there it is. We went ahead and put the 2x4 up so that way we can get our symmetry of our room right without having to worry about the studs. Fortunately, these LECs, they're pretty lightweight. They don't got much to them. As you can see, they're just super light. So basically, uh, they don't need a bunch of hardware to keep them up in the ceiling and they're not gonna fall down from sheer weight and pulling it out of the drywall. They're just lightweight. The next step you guys are gonna need though is you guys are gonna need some of these plant hangers or light hangers, I'm sorry, light hangers. And they're just a little metal clip and they got a little hook on them like that. You're just gonna put them in, they hook in and then they fold back. You're gonna need two ratchet strap light lifters for each light. I'll get these undone and then show you guys how they hook up. There's a certain way they go, so that way you don't pull the ceiling down while you're trying to lift your lights up. But uh, we'll get them hung and then show you guys what it looks like. Okay, so you can see the lights hung and what I wanted to show you guys is with these ratchet lifters. All right, so you got two strings. You got one that goes to the clip that goes to the ceiling and then a leash that sticks out of the side of it. You always want to be lifting your lights up like this. You don't ever want this upside down to where you're pulling on it to try to pick your lights up because then you're pulling on the ceiling the whole time when you should just be able to grab this loose string and click them up as high as you want to get them out of the way. But that's basically how they work right there. You're just going to keep clicking them until they get even and up and out of your face something like that right there and those will be in the description as well I'll give you guys links for all this stuff but you're gonna need you know two of them for this light two of them for the other light so we're gonna go get both lights hung and then we're gonna move on from there all right 
You guys are going to need a 30 inch piece of ducking. That 30 inch piece of ducking is what's going to go in between the lights. Once you guys get that on, uh, there's clamps that go on here. They're giant um, aircraft clamps or plumbing clamps or ducking clamps, whatever you guys want to call them. They got a little threaded nut on them. Um, I forgot those today. I'll have to bring them back. So for now, we're going to go ahead and move on to the tray build. Once you got this out of the way, pretty much you guys can knock out the tray because the rest of it will all be done from the ends and you're not going to need to stand underneath them no more. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the tray. And like I said, I got the rough side up and I'll show you guys why. I'm going to go grab the rest of the lumber and then uh, we'll get to building it. So in the product list, I have you guys get three eight foot pieces of pine, one by four, one inch thick, four inches wide. This pine is what's gonna be used as your sidewalls for your tray. And the reason why I have the rough side up is because I'm gonna put the smooth side on the inside of the tray. So to build this tray, I always found that it's easiest if I just lift this up, wedge this underneath of it like that, drill it down, and then work my way around. So with those three eight footers, you're gonna take one of them and you're gonna cut it at 46 and a half inches. And that's gonna compensate for the ends when you go to put it together for the length. That way it doesn't make the ends widen out fatter than the tray. It'll keep you at a, at a true four by eight foot all the way around. So you're gonna cut one of the four by, or one by four by eight foot pine trim boards at 46 and a half inches, you need two pieces out of the one of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and start putting this together and then I'll show you guys what it looked like when it gets done. Yep, still good. I just learned it's a lot easier to flip this tray over like this way. Then all you gotta do is flip it over when you're done. Now we got all the sidewalls on it. It's got a couple screws left in it once we get it flipped. There it is. You can see the four inch walls. They go all the way around the tray real nice. So the next thing you need to work on is your legs and trellis arms. They were all eight foot sticks. And what we did was we went ahead and made them seven foot sticks and we cut off a one foot piece. And I'll show you guys why. So for the legs, the reason why I had you guys cut off a one foot piece of the eight foot of the two by twos. So you're gonna need two of these eight footers set aside and you're gonna mark two of them at 18 inches and you're gonna mark two of them at 16 inches. Then you're gonna take this one foot piece of uh, excess cutoff that you have and you're gonna put the flattest side you got on that line then you're gonna pre-drill it two times and then put screws in it and this is gonna be a stop when you put the tray down this is gonna give you your back height at 18 inches and your front height at 16 inches so basically what that's gonna do is give you the pitch of your tray for the other two legs that go in the center, you can figure those out after you got the two end ones done. You just put them in play and then butt them up to the center of the tray and tighten them down. But for now, I'm just gonna drill, pre-drill two holes to keep it from splitting and then put my screws in and I'm gonna make two at 18 inches and two at 16 inches. All right, now the tray is up on its legs. As you can see from over here, we use that spare piece of scrap as a support to go up underneath it. That way the weight of the tray can never push down. Then we tag the inside. Okay, let's see if you can see this. Two screws here, one here, one here, going into the two by two, one going down. So these aren't going nowhere. And the back side is at 18 inches. The front side is at 16 inches. So we have a nice 
two inch pitch so the water will come up to the top of this side and run down. And then for the center, we just found center of the tray, which was four foot. We put our level on it, made sure that they're straight up and down, screwed into the sides, put our other block to keep the support. That way the tray can't sag in the middle. And now you have a really nice solid tray and it's only costing us about 40 bucks. So you can't beat that compared to 300 just for a tray. And that's not counting the stand, the legs, the trellis and all that jazz. So our next step is gonna be figuring out where our drain hole is gonna go and we're gonna to have to get that tapped. We have a drain plug. Let's see if we can find it in here. Here it is. So this is a drain plug. It's got a threaded fitting on the back side. Uh, you're gonna drill about an inch size hole. This is gonna sit down inside of it. Then you're gonna thread it up it, but that's after you line it in plastic. But basically you need to drill a hole here uh, this little drain plug, I'll put a link in the description for you guys. Uh, these things used to be really cheap, but now they're getting hard to find for cheap. So uh, most likely you're going to pay about 12 bucks to $29 for one of these. I've seen them as high as 32 bucks, but they used to be like $3 and $6 back in the day. But it goes to a barb fitting for your flex hose. So I'm going to go ahead and get that drilled and then put my plug in, make sure it fits real good, and then pull it back out. I'm just gonna make sure it's get fitted really nice. All right, on to that. All right, so there's our hole for our drain. Uh, it's an inch and a half for this inch and a half drain plug. Uh, you wanna make sure that it's really snug and tight. And then this is the threaded fitting that goes on the underside that you would tighten it down with after you get the tray line in plastic. But before you go any further, you're going to want to make sure you ream this really good as long with the bottom to make sure that there's no burrs or anything that could make a hole in your plastic. And this is the smooth side. There's two different sides to this particle board. This side's real smooth and it's been coated with a coating so it doesn't make holes either. But uh, never use the rough side guys. Always make sure you stick to the smooth side. But there it is, the tray's done. Everything you needed for cutting and all that is over with. So basically all you gotta do is get all cleaned up and get ready for plastic. And we'll show you guys that next. Found the clamps, so I went ahead and uh, got some mounted on there. We got the ducking done there. Now we're gonna lay out our plastic. We got about six inches hanging off the backside. And we're just gonna roll it out like this and then cut it after we get past this side about six inches. Sorry, it's dark in here. I uh, covered my hole that I drilled with some duct tape just to make sure there wasn't no sharp edges and to make a real flat, smooth top. So I just star cut it with a razor knife, poke it out. We're gonna do the same thing when the plastic goes over it for our drain. But I'm gonna get this plastic cut and laid in there and then uh, start staple gunning it. So this plastic right here from Ace, it costed 12 bucks. And as you can see, it is, where's the length at? Right here. Let me get it straightened out. So you see the length that says 10 foot by 25 foot. So if you think about that, for every 8 foot by 4 foot, when you roll it out, you're going to get two trays. So we just cut it in half. And it's real dark in here still until I turn these lights on. But there's another section right here that you can see right here. And I'm going to just take the roll that's left over and roll it back up. And then when I go to replace this plastic for the next round, it's already in there cut and ready to go. And uh, like I said, $12.99, I'll put a link in the description for that as well. Real quick, I just wanna point out a great tip. If you guys take duct tape and you fold it back over on itself and you put it in the corners and on the bottom and you do that on each side and then you do it down there on that side of the tray, it'll really help this stick when you go to lay it out and start flattening it out real good, it'll keep it from rolling around on you. But that's just one good little trick. Just some cheap old duct tape. All right, so we knocked it out using a regular old staple gun. This one here, see that? We uh, smoothed out the plastic. It doesn't need to be perfect. The water's gonna flow down it just fine. It has a really nice pitch. And the watering tea we're gonna put in later that goes across the top to spread the water, I'll show you that. That's what's gonna make sure it spreads across it, along with the capillary matting. But I just run a razor knife down it after I staple it. It goes all the way around the tray, blah, blah, blah. And then now we're gonna do our drain over here. 
and let's see if I can find it. it should be floating around here somewhere. Well, I'll find it and then I'll show you guys what that looks like after we put it in. But uh, basically, let me come over here to the light. You're just gonna cut a star where the hole is above your duct tape and then push that drain down through it. We might use a little Lexol around it just to make sure it's sealed real good. Put the nut on the bottom and the drain's done. So I'm gonna get that and put it in. I know this is gonna be hard for you guys to see, but there is a drain right there, and we put Lex all around it to make sure it was sealed really good. You could also use household goo. And then the connectors up underneath there, I know you can't see that, it's real dark in here, but I'll show it to you later. But worst case scenario, you could take the same hose that you're gonna to use to go to your watering line, like we're gonna use this black flex hose right here. You could take this hose, cut a piece off about three inches long or two inches long, Cut a little star in there, drill your hole in the plywood the same diameter of this, and just push it through until it's flush with the tray. Use your thumb, make sure it's flush, and then flex all it, and it'll make a drain if you can't find these expensive ones. But now that we got that done, we're gonna lay in our capillary matting, which is our white felt. I'll put a link for that in the description, and then cover it with panda film. So keep moving. All right, so I got the white felt in. I'll put a link for this in the description. But just for you guys, uh, they call this capillary matting and grow rooms and all that. But it's basically just white felt. It's bleached, it's sterilized. You can get it from Joanne Fabrics. This is a quarter inch pelt or a quarter inch matting or batting, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they got really good coupons on Joanne Fabrics to get 50% off. So you can get this for a really good deal there. Let's just put it this way. To cover this tray in a piece of cocoa matting, it cost 99 bucks, where this costed me about $11. So you do the math, and you guys see the results from all the videos of massive roots, how it grows a nice thick root matting. It doesn't leach into your water like the cocoa matting. It's just way better all the way around. And then it's fully biodegradable. So because it is made out of cotton, uh, it just instantly degrades when you put it outside. You can buy the polyester kind, it works just as great, but it's not biodegradable like this cotton is. But anyways, that's done. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put my watering tea at the end, and that's what evenly disperses water down the tray. There's ripples in the plastic. That's why it doesn't matter how perfect you get this plastic. With this watering tea in here, it's gonna flood the tray evenly all the way down. That way all the roots get a nice even flow to the drain. Also make sure you leave a gap here so the roots don't constantly grow inside of your drain plug because it can clog you up, mess you up really bad. And you guys see how thick the roots get, so you really gotta keep an eye on that. Also, you wanna keep an eye on this top side. Make sure it's got a good gap from your watering line. Otherwise, the roots will grow inside the watering line and it'll plug it up. So make sure you got a gap. Those are all things you're gonna wanna keep an eye on while you're growing, but matting's done. On to the watering tee. All right, there's the watering tee. So basically all it is is two elbows. It's got a barb connector to hard pipe right there. Then you got a couple of little pieces of pipe to space it together. This isn't glued in the center, it's plumbing taped and I'll show you why. And then you got a couple of legs coming off of a tee and then I drill holes in them. Now this is gonna sit over the end of the tray like this right here. And then you're going to squeeze this bad boy together real tight and make sure it's sealed. It's under low pressure. It's not a real lot of pressure, so it's not going to leak without glue in that one spot when you put the plumber's tape on it. But what this is going to do is going to allow water to come out each end of the pipe as well as down the holes and water this tray real nice and evenly. Now all we have to do, whoops, I slipped over here. Hold on one second. Now all we have to do is... uh hook our black flex line on this and get it over to our water reservoir. Let me get that back on there. There it goes. All right, here we go. Okay, so there's the Panda Film. Covers the whole tray. This is gonna do two things for you guys besides creating a sanitary area, making it harder for bugs and things to get to your rhyosphere. This is also gonna create a humidity barrier and keep temperature in there, which the roots are really gonna like, the moisture and the warmth. So on cold days and all that, this is gonna be a protective layer. Uh, don't tack down the ends, that way you can check your flood and be able to look in there to see what it looks like to fl during flooding. 
Also on the back side, that way you can pick it up and look inside there to check to make sure that your uh, watering tee isn't getting plugged up. But you just use the staple gun and staple it down. Then when you're done, you just go through, rip it out. You can pull the staples or leave them. Some of my trays used to have thousands of staples down because I'd never pull them. But anyways, off to the races. We're going to go ahead and get ready for the rest of the lighting and then finish the air. Close up that window and get ready to drop some plants in this tray. We got our line, our black line that runs to the top of our tray up there. Comes back here. It's going to go inside of this water reservoir. I don't know if you can see that, but it's going to sit down inside there. I'll show you that when we get to it. All right, here we go. Here's our manifold. This is going to be for our fresh air in. That'll be for our hot air out. Window closes down on it. We'll put a couple blocks up top to keep people from breaking in. We'll black plastic this on the outside. Uh, it'll get coated. You'll, it's on the back side of the house, so nobody will ever see it. There's many ways to get fresh air and hot air out, but uh, do whatever you can just to get the air in and out. So that's how we're doing it for this room, just like that. Due to the fact that these LEC lights are uh, 220 or 240 volt, you're going to need a hammer relay. And basically how this works is the power just comes in to the top. And this relay right here breaks, opens, and closes like this off of a low wattage, uh, off of a low wattage um, hammer. So you just can plug it into a regular outlet now. That's low wattage with one low wattage timer and control all your lights at once. And basically, the wire just comes out and runs over here to a 220 outlet. So now you can just plug in your LECs. They daisy chain as well, which is nice. So you only need one outlet. But you plug it in and then this comes on and off over here and it opens and closes to connect the circuit off of one low wattage digital timer that you plug in right here with your cord that comes out. So you're just going to plug in your low wattage timer over here like this and it's going to control your lights. But you have to get power to the room. If these were the regular 110, 115 or 120, whatever you want to call it, uh, you could have just plugged them right into a single outlet like you know normal house outlet that's your regular 15 amps and then most of these digital timers nowadays let's see here's one over here they got two outlets on both sides these give you a bunch of settings uh never use the push pin ones with the pins those things are super dangerous we talk about those a lot in our videos they're garbage but uh that's that, and I'll put this a link for this as well inside of the description that way if you guys want to know how to get one of these uh, they're really easy to wire, but you just need a double pull breaker inside of your panel. You hook up both black or black and white to the breaker itself. Then you're going to use the ground as normal as your neutral ground. You're going to run it out. Both black and white go to the top. Both black and white leave to the outlet. And then the ground tags inside of the box. And that's all it is. Opens and closes the circuit. But gonna get this finished so we can get some lights on in here and uh, get the water reservoir rolling so we can start flooding this tray but we got a couple little things to finish like uh, the air over there on the manifold and blacking it out uh, for tonight we'll probably just get everything running and the air flowing and then we'll worry about making sure it's light tight before we go into bloom but these are all items I had laying around so a lot of its uh, hand-me-down shit and used which it don't matter it saves the money but there it is. Get this room knocked out real fast. Move on. Well, we had a little hiccup with the LECs, but we got it all figured out. It was uh, one of the bad trigger hammer things inside of it, but we got it figured out. So now the lights are hung, air's taken care of. We got fresh air. I meant exhaust sucking the hot air off of the ceiling way over here in this corner, going through the lights and out the fan. And then we got fresh air coming in off of a draw which will brought, bring fresh air from that side of the room to this side of the room. And then the power goes through a hammer relay to a low wattage timer, which controls your lights with one side and then your exhaust fan with the other side. So you know it's always gonna be on if it gets too warm in this room. This has manual and uh, auto settings. So you can manually go through this and turn it on and off, or you can set it to auto where it goes through the timing sequences. And this type of timer has 24 in one setting, so you can do a lot of settings. 
We use the same one for a uh, water reservoir to control all the water times, but this is basically what it is. So I'm gonna go and hit this now and turn the power on for the lights. Oh, it didn't hit manual. There it goes. So now there's power to the lights, and with these LECs, they have a on and off switch over here. So that's how you turn them on. And they need a minute to warm up, but then they'll fire up. So we'll just wait for that to take place. There it goes. They got a nice, real slow warm up. And then they'll be bright as can be in here in no time. But now that we got that done, we're going to go ahead and start laying in the plants. I'm going to have to go get a pair of sunglasses so the camera don't get all messed up from the brightness. But uh, we're going to go ahead and use some Rockwell cubes that I got to figure out where we want to put our plants. We only got six of them going in here, so it shouldn't be too hard to figure out. Uh, we'll show you how you guys how we do that by cutting the stars and dropping them in. Uh, get that handled and then get the water reservoir handled and start cycling it. So I'm going to go ahead and start with uh, water first, flood the tray a few times, cut in plants. We'll get to it. Okay, so we got the six plants in the tray. We evened them out underneath the lights. Uh, we got our water reservoir running. So about that water reservoir, make sure you guys get a Rubbermaid water reservoir if you do. My father-in-law, he went and got a reservoir and we put it underneath there and it was some cheap one. He got it Ace. And the second we filled it up with water, they have these little flat stoppers on the bottom. One of them pushed its way through, started leaking. We had to clean a lot. But I went and bar uh, got another one out of the storage unit, one of mine. I'm going to kick him that one. It's a 60-gallon flat hydro uh, horticulture water reservoir. So that's the one I'm going to use for his water reservoir. Basically... What it's got going on in here is a pump. This is just a regular old 360 gallon per hour pump. Uh, Eco line. I'll put links in the description for all these below. They're extremely cheap online through Amazon. And this one right here is probably 15 or 20 years old. I kicked it to them so you can use it. They just don't die. They last forever and they're real easy to clean. Unlike mag drives and all those expensive pumps, they heat up your water. They constantly break because of the porcelain parts where these don't, or the ceramic parts. Uh, it's got a drain hose that comes from here now because the water reservoir we had fit under there perfect for it to drain. This one sits a lot lower. I added a hose line just to make sure it got down. Then he's got his air pump over here that's running air off two lines with backflow valves. These are a must, you guys. Uh, so many people don't put these on their water lines. Two things that can happen. Power goes out. These can actually siphon water back up towards the pump uphill, believe it or not, on that finished stroke. When the power goes off, it acts like a suction, and it'll destroy the pump. Or if this ever fell off and got below the water reservoir and hit the floor, the water would want to run back down it. So these are backflow valves. This eliminates that from happening. And to control it, we just got it all. The main pump plugged into one of these all-in-one digital timers. I showed you guys these before. Uh, they basically run through about 24 settings. But for him, we just got it set for every four hours. Uh, we'll keep you guys posted on how this starts looking but this is the first day that they're in there a lot of things changed i mean we changed the white piece of ducking to silver just so it all matched in the room uh, i put his air on a thermostat i love these hanging thermostats they're inline thermostats i like these ones because they're so rugged and reliant and they don't break where the the um what do you call let's see if i could get that in light for you guys to where you can see it better see that's just got a dial on it where the digital ones, man, I've had so many problems with digital ones, I prefer these ones. I'll give you guys a link for all that, or at least put up the product list so you guys can get this kind of stuff. But then the air just goes out. So far, it's been pretty constant in here. Uh, I just reset this a little while back, so I don't want to deceive you guys into thinking that. I don't know if you can see that. The light's so bright in here. But it says 75 degrees. And when I came in earlier, it was at 76 degrees and its high was 80 and its low was 72. So it's been 
working pretty good. Uh, we'll check it in a few more days and I'll keep you guys posted on it. You guys already know what we put in for food, so you guys could check out all those videos on you know, reservoir updates and what we feed our plants. Just like tying the trellis, that's our next step is we're gonna come in here and tie the trellis. Uh, I got videos on that and why we tie them instead of buy them because uh, you can flex them around and move them. But basically that's how quick you can turn any old bedroom into a grow room. Uh, you would spend around, you know, two, three thousand bucks on all this stuff if you had to buy it. But if you just chipped away at little pieces at a time, you could start with a small train, build yourself a bigger one as you afford, can afford them. The lights are the biggest initial cost, but after that, they save you so much money, you'll be kicking your butt, uh, kicking yourself in the butt if you don't buy these lights. They save you so much money. We had problems with them firing. It ended up being a bad breaker from Home Depot. I never had that happen before, but uh, we bought an identical breaker and boom, everything worked. So sometimes the manufacturer makes bad ones. I'm not going to knock Home Depot for that, but there it is. Everything's done. Be sure to like and subscribe and check us out in our next videos. We're going to be posting his garden is al along with a bunch of other people's gardens. Uh, be sure to follow us on Kush Coast on Instagram, Kush underscore coast. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next side. And remember, it's not about uh, spending a million to make a million. So save some money. Later, guys.